when we make discussions and we look at the idea of propositional logic, one of the, uh, the bigger parts of this is if we're modeling things that are true and things that are a lie, and as we work with things, what we want to stick with is obviously stick with a valid understanding, which would be the focusing on truths and focusing on things that are always true. Now, when we would have a discussion, one of the techniques that you do is you go through a process of, of kind of stepping through. Uh, you did this when we were looking for, for example, knights, navens, and spies, and you knew with the, some restrictions, and you would have a particular statement. And so if you had an example, say, under knights, navens, and spies, spies of section 1.2 and you know one of them is and, and one of them says uh, for example uh, A says I am the knight and B says A is telling the truth and C says I am the spy you would go through this process and, and try to ask when would valid things work for example A says I'm a knight and so we don't know who that is that could be the knight the neighbor the spy and B says A is telling the truth well, one of the things that I would immediately know for B is if A says I'm a knight and B says that that person's telling the truth, we would know that the possibility here is B couldn't be the knight, right? So because a, a, a knight couldn't point at another person who says I'm, at the, I'm the knight, which is obviously that's either the, the knave or the spy, and so that person would be lying. He's like, well, he's telling the truth, and so that would be a lie. So B definitely can't be the knight. Then C says, I'm the spy. Well, a knight can't say that, and so I immediately know that both B and C can't be the knight. And so what's obviously left over would be that A must be the knight. This technique of going through and taking a statement and taking a statement and taking a statement and making sure that they're all true as I'm working through it and to get to a valid conclusion is the process of understanding an argument. And when we would have that, um, a, a mathematical argument is to put things together using only truths and using only tautologies. So having statement, 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 and then following up with the conclusion, well, under implication, what I would like to have is the thing that you just did. You told me something which is true, which is true, which is true, and I would like the conclusion to follow. I would like this to be a tautology. I would like to find some sort of tautology out of this. And if I want that to be a tautology, then it's an implication. The only thing I could look at this and say, well, an implication, if any of the premises would ever be false, this would just be vacuously true, and so we stay away from those things, right? That would mean that if you'd ever throw in a false statement, false is uh, dominant under and, therefore the entire thing would be false, and false implies anything is always going to be true, and so that's kind of a who care. All right? Who cares? That's just vacuously true. It doesn't add anything to the actual argument itself. So what we would rather have is the issue under implication is that true implies what we want to have is if the premises are all true, I need to worry about whether or not the conclusion is true is my only possibility that's happening. And then your implication would be a tautology, because true implies false. If we somehow would work it out, that say that that would never happen. And that's kind of the goal that we want. Now, rules of inference themselves, and the words inference really is conductive to what we're talking about. We're looking for valid ways to infer a conclusion. And to be valid means it needs to be a tautology that when we have true premises, the conclusion is true, so this is just true implies true, which means that the implication itself is a tautology and we would get something out. Now, there are typical things that we do within arguments and we would have examples where as a particular useful example that says, if Mark is teaching, then the class is, say, Math 321, and I have that 
I know Mark is teaching. And so I could finish it off with, therefore, the class is math 321. And if I would look at this, I would say that, yeah, this is, this is a tautology. You could work this out and say Mark is teaching and make that say T implies that it's math 321 and Mark is teaching, oops, T and T. So this entire thing, if I would want to write it as symbols, you could have this whole idea of T implies that the class is math 321 and T and therefore class is 321. If you wanted to, you could show that this particular thing that that entire thing, which is what this means, is simply a tautology. And so given that, where you would go through these particular statements and write them in this particular way where I would have premise one, I'd have premise two, my conclusion, then given those particular words, this is actually true and we could show it with a truth table, we could show it by discussion, we could um, show it through uh, asking about you know when things uh, using logical equivalencies I could take each of these implications and turn them into not or and work the entire thing out as a use of logical equivalencies and of those three ways and eventually you could actually show that now if you have something that you've said in this nature where you have a premise and a premise and a conclusion and this entire thing is true given this is the tautology we can say this argument is valid. Now what happens is if you have an argument and it's always true it's going to be valid. If you would have an argument and if your argument was not a tautology. We would call this invalid. And what we really want to work with is valid things. We only want to work with things that are taught, you know, tautologies in nature. We want to work with truths. Now, there's certain ones where I don't want to necessarily always go through you know, what did you specifically say and write down specifics. If we could do an argument in only propositional variables, is going to be called an argument form. And so the one I just did if I would simply have taken that, if I didn't tell you what TCT was, so the example that we just did of saying that I have T implies C and I have T, that all implies C, and this entire thing is a tautology, so this would be written as a, a compound proposition. Uh, if I could write this vertically as well, there's another notation as an argument would be writing a, so that's a proposition, this is a proposition, implies the conclusion. I could say T implies C and I have T, therefore I have the conclusion. This would be the notation in the argument form. This is the notation in the symbols form. This particular thing is a tautology and it really, what's nice about this is it does not matter what you plug in for T or C, this entire thing would be a tautology. So if I say, if my name is Mark, then I'm sitting down. Or if I say things like, if mice drink coffee, then lions can dance. Mice my, my, my drink coffee, therefore lions can dance. Doesn't matter what you say, you can put any proposition you want into there. What you can declare about mice, you can declare about lions. You can actually talk about something that you want to talk about. In the end, that formation of it is always going to be a tautology. And so this would be an example of both are, this is a tautology, 
then again, we just simply say that this is a valid. So it's a valid argument form. Now, for these tautologies, and one of the reasons why I'm, I talk about rules of inference are really just simply useful tautologies. Well, tautologies are the way that we work through things. We go through a process of saying that I only want to speak in truths, and we're going to go through and try to form valid conclusions, and we're going to use tautologies to do this. And we're going to use if, if a sentence or a form, if a particular uh, premise isn't liked, you can take that premise and rather rewrite it as a something that's logically equivalent and you can work it out that way. So there's a list for this particular section when I actually have what we call the rules of inference. The rules of inference are just simply a bunch of tautologies that we tend to use a lot. Right? They're useful tautologies. And the first rule of inference was this one. Right? This particular thing, when you have this, if this, if one, then two, you do have one, hence you have two, this particular one is called modus ponens. Uh, better, I like to call this affirming the hypothesis. I kind of like the word affirming the hypothesis because it tells me what I'm affirming. Normally when you have an implication, the left is called the hypothesis, the right side is called the conclusion of that implication. So what are we supposed to affirm? It says a valid form of reasoning, a valid inference, is when you affirm the hypothesis, the conclusion must follow. So we would have that if, if we would go through that, we'd have that work. Another one that we could do would be a variant of this, right? So we could do or if we wanted to, we could say that, you know what, you have T implies C, but let's say I don't want to write T implies C, right? Because T implies C is logically the same as not C implies not T, I could go through and ask, you know, what would happen because of that if I would have not C implies not T, and I, by the way, I don't have C, then I don't have T. This particular thing is, again, this is just a, I'd be using affirming the hypothesis. But if I looked all the way back to the original, I would say that, wait a second. Um, instead of writing it as not C implies not T, let's go ahead and write it back as the original. If I write it as the original, which is T implies C, this kind of looks unique to itself, even though it's actually just modus ponens. It's affirming the hypothesis hidden. So what do we say? If T then C, by the way, I don't have C, and a valid conclusion is that you don't have T. So that would be things like uh, if Mark is teaching, then the math is 321. By the way, this is not math 321. Mark's not teaching that because I'm assuming that if Mark's teaching, then it's 321. So that is a valid form of reasoning. This is also a tautology and gets used a lot. So it gets its uh, own name, <laughs> own name. So this is called modus tollens. A better name for this would be, what do you do? You are going to deny the conclusion. I like that name because denying the conclusion is you have if T then C. By the way, I don't have C. Well, then you're not going to have T. And that's to deny the conclusion. And those are valid. This actually gets immediately to an application of problems. Um, let's go to an example that I like to use. This is silly humor. Um, if Mark is a murderer, uh, then his hands are bloody. And so go through here and say, okay, Mark is a killer, implies bloody hands. Now, correct reasoning, you know, valid reasoning is one of two things to get conclusions. What are we supposed to do? Valid means you affirm the hypothesis or you could possibly deny the conclusion. If I affirm the hypothesis, okay, if Mark's a killer, then he's going to have bloody hands. Well, if you find out that Mark is a killer, then it's valid to say that I'm going to have bloody hands. And you say, yes, Mark has done what he's, I mean, as you've done your reasoning, and affirming of the hypothesis is good, therefore the conclusion must follow.
So that's one thing that you could do. On the other hand, what would happen, the other valid thing to do is actually to deny the conclusion. So we can go back here and say, well, what happens if, okay, if Mark is a killer, then he's going to have bloody hands. But you notice that Mark does not have bloody hands. Well, that automatically says that Mark's not a killer, right? Because valid reasoning is either to affirm the hypothesis, which was the example I just did, or denying the conclusion, which is this example that you see, and this is correct. Now, the problem with this in application for life is people get confused. And if you have a, if you pass off a non tautology as a rule, right? This is called a fallacy. And we usually call them fallacies and they get their own names if they're used enough. And so if it's a big enough mistake that lots of people do, maybe we'll give it a name. So for example, um, let's go to that. Okay, left implies the right. And then we'll look at a problem we're supposed to have hence. Now, what am I supposed to affirm? What I'm supposed to affirm is a hypothesis. Well, what if somebody affirmed the conclusion? Example. If, a, if you're a killer, then bloody hands. You notice the person has bloody hands. The temptation is to say that they're a killer, right? Well, actually, let's go ahead and use those symbols. If killer, then bloody. You notice that they have bloody hands, and it's tempting to say that that person's a killer. But that's not valid, right? This is not a tautology. And this thing gets used all the time, and it's the fallacy, gets its own name because it gets used all the time, of affirming, well, what are you affirming? The wrong thing. You're affirming the conclusion. It's the wrong thing. You're supposed to affirm the hypothesis, not the conclusion. If you affirm the conclusion, you get nothing. So for example, if you're a killer, then you have bloody hands. You notice a person have bloody hands. A person has bloody hands. You're tempted to say killer, but the valid conclusion is nothing. For example, if killer, then bloody hands. Well, I have bloody hands not because I killed anybody, because I fell down and scraped my hands. That's that's a simple counterexample to you calling me a killer. So obviously, doing this, if you try to affirm the conclusion, you're doing it wrong, right? This is a fallacy of affirming the conclusion. The other temptation is to say, if they're a killer, they have bloody hands, and you notice, hey, look, Mark's not a killer. Hence, you're tempted to say that, well, obviously, non-killers have non-bloody hands. No, that's not what I said. Non-killers can easily fall down and scrape their hands and have blood on their hands. And so, even though it's tempting, right? If you're a killer, then you have bloody hands. You're not a killer, so obviously you're not going to have... No, that's wrong. So that is also... A fallacy and this is a fallacy of you deny the wrong thing of denying the hypothesis and so you do you don't do these particular techniques and so most of the fallacies that you run into are variants or misthinking about appropriate things you forget what you're actually supposed to deny you're supposed to deny conclusions you forget what you're supposed to affirm you're supposed to affirm the hypothesis. So other other tautologies that we're supposed to be able to do for our rules of inference and useful tautologies, I'll cover those here in the next video since this is running long.